front office insights, our team by team breakdowns. And today, well, we wrap up our coverage of the National League East Division. We go to uh, our good friends, the Washington Nationals. So this team. <laughs> Uh, they only won 55 games last year, Jim. They finished dead last in the uh, in the NL East, and uh, you know, I <laughs> I don't really know if they did much this off season to to make themselves better. Let's start right there, Jim. The Nationals from last year to this year bridge that gap. Yeah, so the Nationals are in rebuilding mode, and they're not trying to win this year. They're trying to continue to get draft picks and build for the long term and try to build this team the same way they did the last time, which is lose 100 games and then and then come back. But in fantasy, you don't care about how many games they lose, right? You care about who do they have. So let, let's go ahead and, and get to their offseason moves. Uh, the first move was congratulations to general manager Mike Rizzo, uh, who had a baby boy this offseason. So congratulations to him on uh, on on the baby. His uh, baby's name is Sonny uh, Rizzo. So congratulations as Sonny uh, makes his debut. That happened back in January. Uh, but that wasn't the only movie made. Uh, they signed a couple of, of free agents um, that I think are significant. I'm going to start with Dominic Smith. One year, $2 million deal to play first base. Now, Dominic Smith was was stuck in the Mets behind Pete Alonso. Never got a chance to play. He's a plus defender at first. I think he can hit 300 in the big leagues with 15 to 18 home runs. Um, so I don't know if that's ever good enough for fantasy in your league, but I do think he can do that. Uh, they also signed Heymer Candelario, a one-year $5 million deal to play third base. Remember, two years ago, he led the American League in doubles. <laughs> Thought I'd throw that out there. They also signed Trevor Williams, who's going to be a part of their rotation, two years at $13 million. And Corey Dickerson on a one-year $2.25 million. I don't know if he's got anything left. Probably no fantasy relevance at all, really. Didn't make a lot of trades. They did trade A.J. Alexi to the Twins for Christian Jimenez. Uh, that trade's not going to matter. So I guess in fantasy, if you need an everyday third baseman or first baseman, you need volume, you're in a National League-only league, Candelario and Dominic Smith from their offseason moves, yeah, they may get some playing time. Yeah, I mean, you know, you look at the depth chart there for uh, for Washington at first base. You've got Smith, you've got Joey Manessis. Maybe they do a, a little lefty-righty platooning, uh, or if Manessis is over in the DH spot, you know. So, you know, it, it, it does present an opportunity. Corey Dickerson also, a potential opportunity there in left field. Let's just let's go to the, uh, the starting roster here for the uh, position players. Uh, Kiebert Ruiz uh, behind the plate, Riley Adams behind him. Dom Smith at first, Luis Garcia at second, Candelario at third, C.J. Abrams, Jim. That's uh, you know a, a definite prospect that that a lot of people are into uh, with him over there. Let's stay with the infield here, and I mean, like you said, Smith, maybe some power if you if you want some depth at first base. Um, Abrams interest you in any way? I don't know how much he's going to hit, Howard. I hope he does. I'll be monitoring him. Uh, you know, from my perspective, I really, um, you know, I, I think for middle infield, you got to do better than that. I think he's got some talent. He he didn't show well last year, but I mean, look, it was only 44 games. He's only had 302 plate appearances in the big leagues and he's hit 246, hasn't gotten on base, hasn't really stolen any bases. And quite frankly, has been a big disappointment. Um, is it possible there's more in the tank? Sure, there is open minded, but I don't think there's enough potential to draft them in fantasy open-minded, but not optimistic. That definitely makes sense. And this, that's, that's what, you know, we need to hear uh, when a guy like this goes off the board late and people are like, Oh, I, I was going to go after him. Should you have um, outfield Corey Dickerson in left Victor Robles in center lane, Thomas in right again, all of these are, I mean, <laughs> Well, Robles, you want to talk about a disappointing prospect. Any any remote chance of this poor guy being a post-hype sleeper? No. Nothing. <laughs> you have the lowest hard hit rate of any major leaguer. Is that what, is that what it yeah, was Yeah, I think year? the only <laughs> offensive player on this team that's worth taking a gander at is their DH. Their 30-year-old rookie from last year, Jordan right. Manessis. It's the only guy you have to at least consider. I mean, he did it 324. Granted, it was only 222 at bats, but he did have 13 homers and 34 RBIs. So that's kind of how I view it. 
you know, I think that's the one guy, if you need a DH, I might take a shot on him. But besides that, maybe Dom Smith, you know, depending on what, where you stand at first base. There yeah, might be some okay. upside there. But, that's you know, that's but, perfect. It's perfectly fine to tell people you don't want to be shopping at the right. national store yeah. uh, for Fezzi. Is the, uh, is the starting five, is the starting rotation just as bereft of talent for fantasy? I mean, for me, it is, yeah, but let's go through it real quick. You got Josiah Gray, who needs to make some adjustments, Stephanie Value. You got Patrick Corbin, who can't get anybody out. Trevor Williams has no stuff. Cavalli throws 100, doesn't have control. He, you know, could he be a surprise? Maybe. Mackenzie Gore, maybe. I mean, I'd watch them, you know, maybe last round of your fantasy. Mm-hmm. You want to take a chance on one of them. But understand, this is a 100-loss team. It's the worst team in the National League. Second worst team in baseball to Oakland. You're going to lose so many frigging games, it's going to be disgusting. Is there an interleague series between these two teams? Because if there is, I'm 100% in for it if it's out here in Oakland. Yeah, I think Oakland, I think Washington wins that series against Oakland. I do. I'll be um, the only closers, person in the stands. Closers matter. Finnegan maybe gets the saves, maybe. Um, it's going to be a tough, long year in Washington, D.C. And, I, and I'm not just talking political. I'm talking baseball. You, you hate this team. You do. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not a major league team. Okay. It's a minor... Hey, look, that's what you have to do. You want Strasburg and Harper? You got to do this. That's mm-hmm. how we did it the last time we were there, and it worked. And had a nice long run. But it takes seven years to do this. The major league team's a nightmare. They don't have it. It's going to be a long summer. And, you know, you don't, you don't want to have to have fantasy players on that team and have to watch them, do you? No, I don't. So, oh. all right. So then let's let's fish for the dynasty people here. Let's talk about what's, uh, oh, what's beyond. Yeah. Now we're talking See, because. there you go. Oh, now we get excited. So thank you, Howard, um, for doing that. Makes me extremely excited. So if everybody remembers that great Marlon Jung outfield when it first came up, Giancarlo Stanton, Christian Yelich, and Marcelo Zuna, you, you remember how good that was? Right? They came up. They were all stars. Guess what? Washington has that. Yeah, same level, guys. Okay? James Wood is Giancarlo Stanton. Okay? This guy's got a short swing, and he's like 6'6". He's a monster with a short swing. Guy's got great power. He's athletic. He's going to be a star. Then they got Robert Hassel the third. He's Christian Yelich. Line drive swing. Uses the whole field. Going to hit. Power's going to come late like he did for Yelich. Going to hit, hit. No risk with a bat. Hit, hit. And then there's Elijah Green. That's Marcelo Zuna. If he hits, he's going to have 30 home run power, baby. So James Wood, Robert Hassel III, Elijah Green, in that order. You want all three of them. Am I done? I'm not done. Oh, well, no, I'm going let me, to third let base. Let me ask you, as bad as their, oh. as, as bad as their outfield is, uh, with the, the, the placeholders... Um, yeah. Is there a shot that this big trio gets some time this year in the bigs? Is it 2025? It is not. Then no. Okay. Moving See in right a couple along. years. <laughs> Third baseman, Browdy House. Love him. Big bat, got power. He'll be with Wood, Hassel, and Green, but you got to be around in 25, okay? You got to get two more years. Not going to be next year. And then the guy in 25 you really want that no one talks about is Susanna. Oh, man, does he have an arm. He is special, man. People have no idea how good he is yet. Wait till people understand how good Harlan Zazana is. Oh, my God. Two years from now, the Washington Nationals will be back in the board and be relevant again. And let's let's look forward to that. In the meantime, two more years of really good draft picks in D.C. Bring (laughs) us another Harper. Bring us another Strasburg. And then guess what? By 2029... White House, champagne popping. Well, then it sounds like I don't even need to close this out with asking you for a sleeper or a bust because you don't like anybody on this team. We've no look. My 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 look. My sleeper is Dominic Smith. My bust mm-hmm. is Patrick Corbin. Why? Because I have to give a sleeper <laughs> Patrick bust. Patrick Corbin. All teams. <laughs> that's that's the lowest of hanging fruit I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. <laughs> Patrick Corbin. Uh, uh, stack right-handed hitters against Patrick Corbin in DFS. That'll wrap up the Washington Nationals for our uh, front office insights. And, uh, and we'll be moving on to hopefully bigger and better teams in the future.